Hey there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use web components in your existing project. If you don't already have a project uh, that's able to use ES modules, be sure to check out the previous video where I show you how to set up a simple Webpack project. In this video, I'm going to show you how to include the web components into your project, how to load polyfills for browsers that don't support web components natively, and then we're going to build a simple uh, UI where we have a small form that lets you enter first name and last name, and we're going to append those to a data grid. We'll be using components from the Vaadin component set, which is an open source uh, Apache licensed set of web components. We're going to use the text field, the button, and the data grid. If you go on the website, you're able to see some of the components that we have, and you can see example usages of them so that you can see what the syntax is for, for using them. OK, let's get started. So the first thing that we need to do in our project here is to go ahead and install uh, the web components from npm. Okay, now that we have those installed, we'll go into our index.js file and import them, like that. The next thing that we want to do is include a set of polyfills for browsers that don't have native support for web components. Polyfills are essentially JavaScript uh, that emulate some of the functionality in the specification for browsers that don't support it. There's a library called Web Components JS that comes with a loader script that we can include in our web page, which will then do feature detection on the browser and load only the ones that we need. Because it loads these strict, uh, scripts dynamically, we can't just include it like any other script here and have it bundled by Webpack. Instead, we need to just copy over those uh, scripts into our distribution folder and then load them from our index file. So let's install a couple of dependencies first. Now this step is dependent on which build tool you are using. So if you're not using Webpack, be sure to check out the documentation for your build tool on how you can uh, copy over uh, static assets into your distribution folder. So first we'll just include the copy Webpack plugin that we installed, and then we'll configure what we want it to copy over. And then here in the plugins array, we'll configure the copy Webpack plugin and what we want to do here is from the node modules directory, from the web components JS directory, we want to copy over all the JS files into a web components folder inside of the distribution uh, or build folder. With that in place, we will go into our index file and into the head section of it and load these. So what's happening here is that first I'm loading the web components loader. That will then, depending on the browser capabilities, load some additional polyfills if needed, or if none are needed, then it won't do anything at all. Then we're doing uh, a little bit of feature detection here, and conditionally loading this custom elements ES5 adapter. So the custom element spec is based on ES6 classes which uh, means that if you transpile your code down to ES5, you need to have this spe uh, special adapter loaded for it to work properly. Again, uh, all of this code will be in the text version of the tutorial, so you can copy it from there if you want to. All right, so that takes care of the setup part, and now we're ready to start building our UI. The first thing I will do is define this form with the text fields for first name and last name, and the button for adding. I'll create a div class form here, and then inside of it, I will create two text fields and a button. For the text field, I will give them a label. That will be the input prompt, if you will. And I will give them an ID so that it's easier for me to reference them from JavaScript later on. I'll duplicate this line, change this to last name, and then add a button for add. And here as well, I will add an ID. Okay, so that's the form. The second thing that we have on our page is a grid. 
So this will be the dividing grid. We'll give this an ID as well. And then we'll define some columns. Here we can go into the website and see what the syntax is. So we'll copy over these two grid columns from here, put them in here. Essentially the example is the same except for the path is different. So in, in my data object, uh, I won't have nested paths. Instead, I will have a uh, property called first name and one called last name. So what the grid column does here with the path is maps to a certain property on the object that we're binding to. All right, with the markup in place, we can go ahead and run this uh, in our dev server and jump over to our browser to see this in action. Okay, so we can see we have the components here, but since we haven't written any logic for this, it's not doing anything. But we're off to a, off to a good start. All right, I'll close the console and go into the JavaScript file. The first thing I want to do in JavaScript is add a load listener on window. This in general is a good practice when building any application with JavaScript. You want to defer uh, all of your JavaScript work until after the browser has had a, time, uh, had a chance to uh, render the page itself. So once we've loaded, we'll call a function called init UI. And this is where we will then build uh, or define all the logic for our UI. The first thing that I need to do is use those IDs that we specified to get hold of those components. I'm just going to use document query selectors for them, like that. So we have, uh, we have a handle to each of the components that we had. The next thing I want to do is define an array for the, all the people that we have in our grid. Like that, it's going to start off as empty. And then we'll uh, define a listener on the button that we can use to add people to the grid. So in here, what we want to do is first of all, update the people array. The way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to create a new array containing all of the people from the previous array and then add a new object uh, with the information from those fields. And the way I get those values from the fields is by calling dot value on those fields that we uh, got with the query selector, so on the elements themselves. Okay, so we've created a new array containing our new person. The next thing we want to do is pass that array to our grid. We do that by setting the items property. Then what we can do is we can clear these fields so that they're ready for, for the next input. So. Okay, like that. We'll save it, got auto formatted. Go back to our browser, refresh here, test it out. And you can see that we're able to add stuff into the into the grid. Okay, so that is it for this tutorial. So in recap, we installed the components, we added polyfills for older browsers, and we used uh, the web components in our index file, then added some JavaScript uh, to add logic. Now, you can probably see that there's quite a bit of boilerplate when you're using web components in straight up vanilla JavaScript, like uh, with any other uh, straight up vanilla JavaScript development. The nice thing with web components though is that they work well with most frameworks out there. So if you're interested in seeing how you can use web components in frameworks like Angular or Vue, be sure to check out some of the videos that I've recorded on how to integrate with those uh, frameworks. Thanks for watching.